what do you think? That was my first ever time lapse. And so what I thought I would do is just take you through my process of creating uh, that time lapse right from the start um, to the end, uh, how I chose the location of where I wanted to do that uh, time lapse. Also the camera settings I used. Um, I'll take you through what how I edited in Lightroom and then finally how I brought it all together in iMovie. So um, I don't use Premiere Pro, don't want to use, um, pay for the extra subscription. So I have um, iMovie on the Mac here. So I just wanted to show you how I bring it all together um, in iMovie because there are a couple of little idiosyncrasies um, to make that work. So uh, yeah, so let's get stuck in. Okay, so how did I choose my location? Well, I know I wanted to get even light. Um, I didn't want to do a transition from uh, day into night, given that I haven't done a time lapse before, I didn't want to have a variable light as another consideration that I had to take into. I wanted to have something that was very even in light, and I didn't want to have something in the middle of the day though, because middle of the day shooting potentially is not always the most dramatic. And I also wanted some movement of light with cars and so forth as well. So, so I ended up settling on a bridge above a really busy bus stop in the center of Brisbane. Um, the bridge above gave me a good sight out of the um, bus stop below and the city in the background. Um, and at, being at night, it really gave me some really good uh, opportunities for light trails as well. Um, and then there was, because it's such a busy bus stop, there's lots of buses and lots of people moving through uh, in and out of the frame all the time. So that's how I settled on how I was gonna compose this time lapse. Okay, so what camera settings did I use? Um, a lot of the research that I, I did said that um, if you have too short a shutter speed, you don't quite get the nice movement on the of the illusion of movement through the frame of time lapses. So um, I really wanted to focus on a shutter speed of two seconds as the most important thing. Too short of a, a shutter um, was going to lead to probably more jittery time lapses um, and too long of a shutter, like if you do a long exposure, you'll just have um, the buses and people moving through the frame. So I really wanted to focus on two seconds as a number one priority for me. Um, so my settings after that, I was able to do ISO 64 um, and F4.5. Um, F4.5, I don't know if I would do that again. I'd probably go for a different type of aperture, probably closer to F8, F9 to get more of the city in the background. Uh, I used a Nikon D810, um, so that has a built-in intervalometer, and so I didn't need to purchase an intervalometer there. I could do it in uh, the camera. I took the photos every five seconds, and I did it um, for, I think, 25 minutes which is about 300 photos all up. Um, I also did these in full um, raw formats. Now there are some people who would say that you can do it in JPEG. Um, because it was my first time, I wanted to do it in full raw. Uh, big files, of course, uh, 300 photos at full raw. Um, it's gonna take up a lot of space in your hard drive, um, but I just wanted that flexibility to have full raw uh, editing uh, options available for when I put it into Lightroom. Now I'll show you how what I did in Lightroom um, and then also from there what I did in iMovie. Okay, so. Okay, so you can see here my uh, batch of photos, um, like I said, 300 photos that I took um, and I've imported these into Lightroom now. Um, so you can see here, oh, this is the full final edited image, but I want to just go back to before, what it looked like before. So I exposed correctly for the bus stop, um, make sure that was um, exposed correctly. Um, and then in the background you can see the city, um, but you can see in the city it's a bit underexposed, um, but I could bring these up through the shadows. And this is the after, um, and this is the final image where I will put this full edited, these editing settings across the other 300 images. Look, it's really important to note that I have also 
um, done this in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Um, and the reason for that is because obviously this is going to go into a time lapse movie and the aspect ratio um, is 16 to 9. You don't have to do that, uh, but when you're importing that through to iMovie, that aspect ratio is 16 to 9. And so you don't have to crop to fill, um, which you can do in iMovie, but I choose to do it in Lightroom um, straight away. Okay, so now that I've got this edited image, um, oops, zoomed in and zoomed out. So what I just do is I right click on the image and if you go into develop settings and then you can copy settings here um, and then make sure that everything is ticked that you um, that you use for the editing. So basically everything is ticked there. You click copy and then you just, for me it's just on the um, hold down the next photo and then shift um, and what that will do is then um, to the, all the images that you want to process and then you right click develop settings again and then paste settings now that will take all the settings um, that you put into that photo and you will take you through and do um, the editing uh, across your whole batch of images that just ensures that um, that you've got the exact same editing the exact same cropping happening across every single image so it looks like one continuous film. So once that's done, um, you've exported those all out. I've exported those out as probably about a 10 meg JPEG, 300 files at 10 meg, so that's big enough. Um, I've saved them and now I will bring those back into iMovie. Okay, so here I am in iMovie. So to import these um, files in, you just click on that little downward arrow and that will bring up a little import um, box here and you just find your files um, wherever you saved it, wherever you have saved them and import them all. So I've imported them already. Um, the other thing that you need to do before you drag into your reel down the bottom here is also go into preferences. So go to iMovie preferences. Um, and then make sure when you have when you get this uh, box up is that the photo duration you will put to 0.1 of a second. Now 0.1 of a second is the smallest amount of time that iMovie uh, will import a photo. So 0.1 of a second, that's 10 frames per second. Uh, what you generally need as a minimum um, for time lapse is 24 frames per second, which is what most cinematic videos are shot at. So. 0.1 of a second is the shortest, so that's 10 frames a second. We're not there yet at 24, but let's bring that in at 0.1. So once you've done that as well, you just import them in. And so you'll see here if I play at um, 0.1 of a second, it's still pretty jittery. Um, so that's okay though, So, but we're at 0.1 of a second. So what then you do is then you just export that file out. So file um, and then share to a movie. share as a file um, and then export that out. So now you're going to have that file um, saved as a 10 frame per second movie. From there you get that movie and then you re-import that finished 10 frame per second movie back into iMovie. Okay so now that I've imported my 10 frame per second movie I'll click and drag that in and all I need to do now is speed this up to 24 frames a second, so that's really just 240% of 10 frames. So if I go back up to the top right hand corner in speed, and I'm going to do a custom speed, and I'm going to make that 240%. So I just click on that, that shrinks down. So if I widen this and press play now, you can see the difference, and that's 240%, so that's 24 frames a second. Um, the video processing now. So for contrast, I might just show you um, what the 10 frames per second look like. So if I go back into here, speed, back to 100%. All right, so let me just put this in, and that's what it was. So you can see in the 10 frames per second how it was very jittery, um, and the 24 frames per second um, is a lot smoother. So that's basically it. So that's the whole process. What I did um, in with that as well is, is that 
I went back into Lightroom and I cropped um, a bit heavier, a second set uh, of those 300 images just to make it look like it's a, a transition for another ca from a ca camera angle and obviously added in music as well to give it a bit of extra, um, a bit of extra life and a bit of extra zez. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed that time lapse um, uh, photography that I did uh, over the weekend. Um, I think it's something I will definitely do more of. Um, hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.